Can you reach your hands toward Dr. Ron and let's pray a special blessing over him. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray blessings over my husband. I pray you give him wisdom. I pray that you give him the words that he needs to encourage this congregation today. Let every ear that is here, eye to see and a heart to receive what Jesus is going to do for them today. Help us to decrease so that you may increase. In the name of Jesus, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Asante sana. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't be jealous. <laughs> Just kiss your wife. Amen. Amen. Is your wife here? Yes, my wife is Where? here. Where? She's there. <laughs> now. You imitate everything I do. <laughs> but you don't go kiss her. Wait, 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 wait. I, wait, I kissed mine twice. All right, all right now. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're looking a lot better than you did when you first came in. You know, praise looks good on you. Doesn't it? Praise looks good on them. Amen. Amen. Turn, if you would, in your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 11. In verse 1. This message is going to help you. Can you read it with me from the, from the screen? Let's read together. So many pamoja. You lead it, go ahead. Go ahead and lead it. Okay, to, to some kwa pamoja. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I want you to notice with me that it says now faith. Ya kwamba inasema sasa imani. In other words, faith is right now. It's in the present tense. Then it says, now faith is the substance. Bring, bring this down if you can. I'm getting a ring, 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 ring. It says faith is the substance. What is substance? Aha, mambo ni nini? What is substance? Ninini. You. I'm just asking. <laughs> I know it's nini, but what is sub? 
What's the definition of substance? Substance in English is um, something that you can hold. It's content, something you can hold. All right. It's a, it's a reality? It, huh? it's a, okay. Yes, it's a reality. So when you say now faith is the substance, so you're talking about a reality. Ya kwamba tukiongea kuhusu imani ni jambo tunaongea kuhusu kitu ambacho kipo. So faith is the sub, sub, substance of things hoped for. Ya kwamba imani ni jambo ambalo linatumainiwa. So faith is made up of Hope. And hope is where? What, what, what is hope? Hope is always tomorrow. Now we define later in the message, but I might as well give it to you right now. Hope is supernatural imagination. Yani tumaini ni mafikira ya kiungu. In other words, yani kwa maana jingine, hope is what your future looks like. Tumaini ni vile usoni wako waonekana. If God has his way. Kama Mungu ako na njia yake. So faith is the substance, the, the reality. Of what your future looks like if God has his way. So all you're doing in believing. Is bringing your hope into today. You begin to possess your hope. Now faith is Sasa imani ni the substance ajambo the reality linalonekana the tangibility linaloshikika of what your tomorrow should look like ambayo kesho yako inafaikae aje today leo if god has his way kama mungu ako na njia yake do you know what a revelation that is? I've been preaching 45 years. That's a long time. And it just touched my spirit. It's like it came alive inside of me. That faith is the reality of what God wants me to possess today. If he can have his way. Wow. Wow. You know, we could just stop right now. Thank you for coming. I appreciate all of you being here today. And uh, I mean, if we just grabbed hold of that one idea, it would change our prayer life. We would possess more. We would walk in more victory. We would, not, we would have wholeness, soundness. We would have 
the best of what God can dream or that we could dream with God's help. Now I want you to close your eyes and think of an area of your life that is totally out of order. If you look at the Bible and you look at your life you would say this is not God's best for me. Close your eyes for a minute. And try to picture God's best for you. Now look back at me. You came up with a picture of something. Now let's be honest with one another. Do you really think you're going to have that? If you really think you're going to have it, raise your hand. Then why don't you already have it? What, what, what prevents you from having that? Somebody say something. What prevents you from having it? Pastor Millicent, what prevents you from having huh? doubt uh-huh. Rhonda Rhonda huh? fear fear of what So fear, fear of failure. Boney. Don't be nervous. Just. Fear. Now, Millicent, how do you overcome fear? What does the scripture teach is the antidote for fear? So the very thing that you need is the very thing that is keeping you look since we're just friends here there's nothing keeping back God's best for your life except you you if he promised it, you can have it. Now, if you're asking to get rid of your husband, 
kama unauliza ukaweze kumtupilia mume wako cuz you you'll do better the second time kwa sababu unaweza fanya vyema mara ile ya pili tell your neighbor I, i'm talking about the person behind you pia jirani yako anaongea kuhusu yule mwenye yako nyuma yangu yes the man back there yule aliye nyuma yangu If you're asking for the will of God, there is nothing that can prevent you from receiving that other than you. Amen. Amen. Or oh me. Or ouch. What does that mean? Try. Translate ouch into Swahili. <laughs> oh, brother. So, well, turn to 2 Corinthians 4.18. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Now, that seems confusing. While we do not look at the things which are seen. Don't look at what you can see. Paul is telling us to look at what we can't see. Does that seem confusing to you? I don't want you looking at what you can see. That's like Mothers, you're going into your daughter's room. And your daughter says, don't look at the things seen. Just look at the things not seen. And you would say, well, it's the things that I can see that are a mess. So what does he mean? Do not look at the things that are seen, but the things that are not seen. Well, one of the things, put that back up for us there, brother. It says, for the, for the things that are seen are temporary. Write this down. If you can see it, it's subject to change. If you can see it, it can change. So let's say you're staring at your problem. Whatever the problem is. You need to remind yourself that that problem is subject to change. How many of you need money? Sub subject to change. I didn't mean change bad. I mean, <laughs> if you can see a problem, that problem can change. Now, why is it the things that are not seen are not subject to change. Because they're eternal. 
kwa sababu ni vya umilele you see the things that are not seen existed long before the things that are seen ya kwa mambo ya siyo onekana ya liishi tangia ata zaidi ya mambo ya mbao ya naonekana in fact the scripture teaches us the things that are seen are made out of the things that are not seen mandiko ya natufuza kwa mba mambo ya naonekana ya metoka kutoka kwa mambo ya siyo onekana And the things that are not seen are eternal. If you can see it now, it will not last. It will disappear. Even this earth does not last forever. The scripture says it's folded up like a tent. And put away. But the things that are not seen are the building blocks of your miracle. So if you can have confidence in the value of what you cannot see you can build a better miracle. Turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And verse 1 through 18. Read the whole thing. Therefore, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we do not lose heart. And we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience, conscience in the sight of God. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ who is the image of God, should shine on them. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your born servants for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So then death is working in us, but life in you. And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke. We also believe not knowing, sorry, we also believe and therefore speak. 14. Knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will always will also raise us up with Jesus and will present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that grace, having spread through the many, may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing. 
Yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is bad for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Read that again. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. One more time. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Now, Sasa. If you were to make a house, you would need materials. For example, you would need concrete, bricks. And you assemble these bricks in an order. And eventually you would have your house. Which is greater? The brick or the house? Ni ile mawe ama ni ile chumba. Because it is assembled Kwa sababu ni mfano out of your dream. Ya ndoto yako. In other words, you had an imagination. Ya kwamba ulikuwa na mafikira. You obtained the building blocks. Ukaweza kuleta mawe ile to build your vision. And the vision is made up of the things you cannot see. Therefore, the vision is greater because it is assembled to express your dream. But how long will it last? Is it forever? No. The dream is only needed as long as you need it. Now when you die, do you need to take that house with you? Do you need to take anything with you? Because he has for the other side, in the same way that he had material ready to build your dream on this side, that same material is available to build your dream on the other side. So if you want a house on the other side, you can have it made from the same stuff, eternal. Those blocks or bricks are made up of the promises. If you can find a promise concerning something that you need, you can turn that promise into a reality. We read in the last service 
Tukasoma katika ibada iliyopita. Let me read a few to you. Ni wasomeni pia. Psalm 145:9. Azaburi 149:9. The Lord is good to all. Bwana ni mwema kwa wote. He has compassion on all he has made. Isaiah 26.3 You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. 1 Chronicles 16.34 First Chronicles 16:34. Give thanks to the Lord. For he is good. And his mercy endures forever. Psalm 100 and verse 5. For the Lord is good. And his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues to all generations. James 1.17 Every good and perfect gift comes from above, coming down from the Father of heavenly lights who does not change like a shifting shadow. 2 Samuel 7.28 Sovereign Lord, you are good. Your covenant is trustworthy. You have made promises. These good things that you want for your servant. The law of the Lord is good. Refreshing the soul. The statutes of the Lord are, un, are trustworthy. Making wise the simple. So what we're seeing in here is that there are promises. And if you're needing something in this natural realm the way that you're going to build it is by searching the scriptures and finding the promises that pertain to the particular need that you have and pray those needs as if you're praying at the grocery store or at the hardware store or the plumbing store or wherever you're trying to, to, to get your materials to build with. Rhonda, what did you do with the my You don't know where it is? Receipt yangu. Ah, oh, we'll make it up. Nita yeza ku shugulikia. All right, that's the receipt. Receipt. All right, now. Tasa. Now, I want, to, I want all the men in this room Wanaume wote male hapa who have a picture of their wife Bauko na a picture Yamkewako. Uh, What's that mean? Huh? No? No, I do. Picture. It's not just a picture. See your picture too. It is the picture of the most beautiful woman in the world. Where, where, where's your picture? My wallet, I always live with her. Oh, so then I can go down. That doesn't count. Now, 
You see? When I yawn you, do you see? I, you think I'm kidding? No, 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 no. She's so beautiful. <laughs> anyway. So, there is a store in America. I don't think it's around anymore. It was popular during the 1980s and 90s. And it was a showroom where the finest things that you could buy were on display. And you would go into the store and they would give you a list and you would fill out the things that you wanted with the SKU number and the amount that it was to be charged did you get that right? Yeah. Okay. And, and you would pick out whatever you wanted. And when you were done, you would go to the checkout. And you would give them your credit card. And they would charge your card for the cost of the goods. And then they would give you a, a receipt that said the items were paid for. And then you waited. Now let me ask you, once you received the receipt, did you own it? Yes. It's yours. I mean, you paid for it. The problem is you did not yet possess it. So you go down to the Toyota dealership and you want a brand new Prado and you want it with all the bells and whistles and they say there's not one like that in the country. So you give them the money anyway and they go back to uh, Japan and they make one for you that has everything on it that you want. And then what do you do? You wait. Don't you? Now, you could say to your, your neighbor, I have a Prado. And you're your neighbor would say, where is your Prado? Oh, I don't have it yet. I have a picture of Dr. Ron's most beautiful wife. No, that's not the one. I have, I have, I have a receipt. And they say, oh, you do. Yeah, I, I paid, uh, how much did they cost? A Prado. Prado in a, brand, a brand new. Uh, 12 million. I mean, with everything. I mean, everything. I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> talking in tongues. If it has the bells and the whistles, it the costs best. 15 million. 15 million. Million shillings. Million kuminatano. All right, so you've paid 15 million. Umelipa million kuminatano. And you tell your neighbor, I've paid 15 million. Umelipa million kuminatano. And all I have is this little piece of paper. Lakini kitu niko nacho ni receipt tu peke yake, karatasi. And they think you've lost your mind. Na wanafikiria wewe umepoteza akili yako. 
that you would give 15 million for a piece of paper. You see, the paper or the promise is of no more value than the one who promised it. So if Toyota has a, a good reputation in Kenya, and they have delivered on others who have ordered the same way, then they have what's called a reputation. And there's a good chance that you're going to get exactly what you've asked for. And if you couldn't get what you wanted, they would probably give you your money back. That's called integrity. Is that true? Now, is it true? I'm asking a question. Well, can somebody tell me the time that I have left up? 17 minutes. 17, 17 minutes. All right. 17 minutes. Where was I before I checked the time? Do you remember? Toyota has a good reputation. A reputation. Is it true that the scripture teaches us that God cannot lie? Do you have a... Is that connected? Did you pay your bill? It's not on. Does that, somebody have a, a, a phone that's on? Go to Google. Or Bing. I'm a Bing. And ask. Say Bible. Bible. That's B-I-B-L-E. Biblia. And then put impossible for God to lie. We're waiting. Hebrews 6.18, is that's what my wife says. Did I say that if the man didn't beat you at finding that, that he has to buy you the Prado? Well, I, 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 I don't think I said that. So what was it again? Hebrews 6, 18 and 19. Can you? Now read, read that with me. God did this so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have fled to take hold of the hope set before us may be greatly encouraged. 19. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain. Now go back. Now notice it says, God did this so that by two unchangeable things. What are the unchangeable things? What are the unchangeable Put it back up there. What are the unchangeable things? Huh? What two things? What two things? Okay. Hmm? What, what, what? His promise and his oath. 
In other words, Toyota has given you their promise that if you give us the money, we give our oath that it will be delivered to you. And if the promise is broken, the oath demands a return of the investment. Now, when you have the oath giver is also the originator of the promise and it is impossible for him to lie, what are the chances are you going to get back something because he can't do it? Zero. Hakuna, hakuna. It's very good, isn't it? You like that, don't you? Napenda hii. You, you can use that in business. Unaweza itumia katika biashara. Yes, if you have integrity, you will be able to ensure that because of the of your name, yes, to ensure that you fulfill the part of your bargain. Okay, your your part of the bargain is based on your integrity. Your integrity and what's the other part based on? Um, uh, well, let's, let's don't go brand. There's some, I'm, I'm working, listen, we're in a business conference here. Just give us a minute. Jesus, Jesus gave you both his name and his promise. I, I like the brand. I think that's, I, I like it, but let's make it a little more, uh, e a little easier to understand. Let's take your mother. Your mother, is she living? But you understand mother. I mean, we all had them. My mother would say, if you are home at such and such a time, you'll receive supper. And so your whole life, when you're home at a certain time, supper's ready. This time you're going to bring a friend home whose mother never produces on time. So he's used to hearing Mamas promise something that they don't deliver. So he's very skeptical. And you say to your friend, friend, my mother never fails. She comes through all the time. And he says, friend, my mother lies all the time and never comes through for me. And that is the same tension that you have between God and the devil. The devil, who is the father of lies, will promise you things that will cost you more than you ever wanted to pay, take you to places you never wanted to go, and hang around with people you never wanted to be around, and then compare that to God, who said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. I'll never turn my back on you. He treats you the same today and tomorrow as he did yesterday. 
His word has always been good. His word will always be good. His word is good. In fact, one of the names that he has given is truth. You wonder, look, God gets blamed for a lot of things. I hear often, listen, being a pastor, I was a pastor for over 30 years. A church of six, seven thousand people. People were constantly listening to me. And we would get members from other churches. Where the pastor did not walk in integrity. And it was very difficult for them. To adjust to a new environment. Because they had no good example. Is God a killer? Is he a killer? Is he a thief? Now just think for a minute. I'm not, I'm not asking you to blurt it all out, but is he a thief? The Bible says it's impossible for God to lie. But is he a thief? Does he destroy? Does he kill? Now we can get into a longer debate than we're going to do in the next seven minutes and ten seconds. But based on his integrity alone, even if I don't understand it, if he says to me, I am not a thief, I do not kill, and I do not destroy, his word alone is good enough for me. Yet you hear people blame him. Even well-meaning people. You hear the preacher at the funeral. Well, the Lord took him. Say that again. Uh, well, the... You got to dance to make it work. The, the Lord took that man. How did he take him? Cancer. Does God have any cancer to give away? I know sometimes it's easier just to blame God. But God doesn't kill anybody. Are you, do you see how people do? We, we just blame God for everything. Well, he's punishing Israel right now. And he's, he's, he's done, and you hear all of this stuff that does not line up with the Bible because the Bible says it is impossible for him to lie and when what you say does not line up with what he says, then you've got to be the problem. Oh, the questions that are going on in the brains of this church. I can hear them all. 
if you only knew how did how did so many people die in the old testament and it said to god so how can it be it could be that you have misunderstood now unless you're all knowing maybe you should schedule a bible study with me give me an hour and i'll straighten that stinking thinking out because God is not a killer. Are you with me? And it offends me to hear preachers talk about how he took that baby home. Or that this person died from the cancer that was given to them by God. Are you with me now? God cannot lie. Mungu but how in the world can you have hope if you think God is your enemy? Na je, na and he's kama working kama against you. Ya kama mungu vita. And every time you get one step ahead, na mbele moja. it's God that's tripping you up. Ya kama ni mungu it's God that's causing your trouble. Ni mungu so when you pray, unaomba, who do you bind? If you think God is the one that did it, then you end up having to bind God. And you apologize to the devil. Oh devil, we've been blaming you for so many things. For so many years. And then here we find out. We had Pastor Big Mouth. He told us that God gave him a new revelation. And it was really God that was doing all the killing. And it brings me back to one simple statement that I made when I was standing in front of you, my dear brother. He can't lie. So if my understanding implies that he has lied, then I've misunderstood. My God is a good God. Do you hear me? And there will be a day, even though I look like I'm only 45, there will be a day when I'm going to go get, they're going to put me in a box. Are you with me? Please do not say that God put me in that box. Are you with me? Now, I don't have to take anything with me. You can put me in my birthday suit and I don't really care. Now, you may not want to see that. But what I can't take a thing with me. Yet Satan will have you work your whole life to accumulate as much stuff as you can. And then somebody else gets to use it. You can't buy your way into heaven. But you know what you could do is help the poor. Jesus said, he that giveth to the poor lends money to the Lord and from the Lord shall be repaid with interest. Now you could use your money to be a blessing. But don't get the idea that they're going to they're they're put all that money in a box for you. 
Lakini usikadhania kwamba hela hizo zitawekwa kwenye ile jeneza. Because if you get to heaven it's not even the currency that we use in heaven. hata ukifika mbinguni pesa ile haitumiki mbinguni. Why would we want a Kenyan shilling in heaven? Pesa ya Kenya tutatumia nini kule mbinguni? We got streets made of gold. Tuko na njia zilizotengenezwa na dhahabu. Are you with me? Je, mko na mimi? How much time do I have left? Niko na dakika ngapi zilizobakia? Oh! Oh! Time out. Muda umeisha. It is over. Umeisha yote. Katika. The door is going to open up. I'm going to disappear out of here. Ngo itafunguka na mimi nitapotea. Romans 8 24 through 28 Now listen this is my last verse my last scripture okay I promise you Don't get me in trouble now Romans 8:24 through 28 For we are saved by hope But hope that is seen is not hope lakini tumaini inayoonekana sio tumaini. For what a man sees, why does he yet hope for it? Ya kwamba kama kile mtu anakiona basi tumaini ni ya nini kwalo? But if we hope for that, lakini tukiweza kutumaini ya kile, we see not. Ambacho hatukioni. Then do we with patience wait for it? Basi tutakingojea tukiwa na utulivu. Likewise. Kwa basi pia the spirit also helps our infirmities. Roho anatusaidia katika mambo magonjwa yote. I use that that interpretation. Well, did you get it out? No, no. Let's get what well, infirmity. Infirmity uh she does it. Are you sure? Because we're gonna we're gonna pray through. <laughs> Where was I, brother? Infirmity. Uh, infirmity. For we know not what we should pray. For as we should. But the Spirit Himself. Make it intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered and he that searches the hearts knows what's in the mind of the spirit because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God and we know that all things are working together for good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Now how can you be assured that everything in your life is working for good except that you have the integrity of the man who made the promise to you? Turn to your neighbor and say God made that promise to me. Mwambie jirani yako Mungu alinitahidia. Turn to the other neighbor and say all things are working together for good in my life. Ya kwamba mambo yote yanatendeka kwa wema katika maisha yangu. Tell him God made that promise to me. Mungu alinifanyia ile ahadi. Now no matter how difficult life is for you right now. No matter how many people come along and tell you that you are never going to recover. No, no, no matter how often Satan lies to you that you are stuck and things will never change. My God. My God. My God. Says all things. All things. Are working together. For good in my life. According to his purpose. By Christ Jesus.
Fiddy patter, fiddy patter, fiddy patter. Now, if you're up against a wall, if you're up against what looks like impossibility, if there looks like very few options left, and you want the prayer of faith, and the prayer of faith can move mountains. If you want that prayer of faith on your behalf, stand to your feet. Remember, if you can see something, it's subject to change. Now, how many of you know what you're up against? You can put a name on it. You can see it. You know exactly with what you're dealing with. Raise your hand. Just raise it up. Now with the other hand, you're going to use it in just a minute. I want you to bow your head. And I want you to close your eyes. And I want you to see the thing that is in that one hand of yours. That thing that you have a, that you can put a name on it. You can see it. And I want you to see what that problem looks like when God gets done with it. I want you to see what that problem looks like when God applies his best. To that problem. And if you can see what that problem now looks like when it's God's best for your life, I want you to lift up the other hand. And let me pray for you. Just let me pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. I pray for every man, woman, and young person in this place. In one hand, God, is a terrible difficulty. It looks like an impossibility. It looks like there is no way for that problem to be resolved. Maybe the doctors have called it incurable. Maybe the financial planners have said there is no way but bankruptcy. No matter what the name is of that problem, we apply our faith to it and we see you take that problem and turn it into a Miracle. You said calling those things that be not as though they were. So we're no longer going to give power to the problem. We are going to begin to confess the promise. We're going to confess over our life and over our circumstances every day the promise and we're going to believe our hope what this looks like when God gets done with it and we're going to pull that hope into now and all we're going to do is exchange a Bible promise as a receipt for something that has not been delivered to us yet. Now I pray for those that are sitting outside in the overflows. 
I send the word, the miracle word to those people outside. That the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is quickening their mortal bodies right now in the name of Jesus. And I thank you that in the weeks to come, Pastor Millicent and the other pastors here are going to receive testimony of how people in this room today and those in the overflow, those watching by, by social media, how they went from a person with a problem to a person that is a possessor of the very best that God has for them. And I thank you that Pastor Bishop Jimmy and Pastor Alice will give room in these services for people to testify and say, you won't believe, but while you were gone, we had a miracle breakthrough service and I took problems that I've been fighting against for a long time and I put them on the throne of grace and I took material made from the promises of God that I could not see and I made out of that a perfect response and I believed God and he gave me my breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Now, lastly, I take authority over the lying devil and every demonic spirit and even every wicked friend that reminds us of only of our weaknesses, never reminds us of, of something strong. And I bind their mouth. I refuse to listen any longer to the lies that have been fed to me that have made me even question God's integrity instead of that of the devil. And I command this curse. And in this room, there are curses that go back generations. And I break these curses in Jesus' name. And I apply the blood of Jesus to everyone here and I thank you God that when we leave this room today we will leave a different people we will leave possessors we will leave people that are richly blessed in every area of our life and I thank you that the miracles that have begun today have only started in Jesus name Amen